we, we believe tonight that the Lord will help us. It's a, it's a very important night where we are expecting God to set people free. The things I will be sharing with you tonight are very dear to my heart. And time may not be adequate to explain a lot of them. But I believe whatever I will share will minister to someone to give them understanding. So tonight, if you want a title, we are talking about spiritual intelligence. <clears throat> spiritual intelligence. Information is very key. And I believe that uh, what you don't know may actually be what the devil can use to defeat you in life. Now, I want to start just by getting out of the way a confusion that normally happens when you start praying for people and their manifestations. I was in Mozambique. After, as I was coming to the end of my preaching, I was about to minister to people. As I turned around, there started to be commotion at the back in the present worship. And um, God started, started to set people free. After the service, I heard one of the pastors say, Ha! Ah, so all these days, we were being led to worship by demons. Now, that's why I said we need to get that kind of confusion out of the way. In this book, Good Mo Sunday Morning Bible Lectures, I'm not going to open exactly, but you will, when you go under where it talks about deliverance, you will discover that the emphasis is there that a person is a spirit. You have a soul. And you live in a body. You are not a soul. You are not a body. You are a spirit. When you are a truly born again child of God, the activity of the enemy cannot be happening in your spirit. It can affect your soul. It can affect your body. So we need to get that confusion out of the way so that you can be having challenges, but they cannot be sitting in your spirit if you are a child of God. That cannot happen. Now, Having said that, it simply means that at a point when you see a person, whether it's a leader, whether it's a what, let's say it's a deacon who comes, we pray for a deacon here, and there's a manifestation. It, is simply, it is simply means that somewhere in the, whether in the body or in the soul, the enemy was oppressing the person. Not necessarily that that person. A Christian cannot be demon possessed. In fact, is the terms that were used in the Bible also and by people that are wrong. When you study the original Greek word for where people translate demon possessed, it's not even supposed to be translated that way. Now, okay, maybe. To, to help someone, um, let me start here. What activities of demons can happen in a Christian? This is not new stuff. If some of you have gone to Amphic evening, Amphic part-time, you, you will have heard some of these things, but let me just help someone. 
And person can go under what we call a demonic attack. A demonic attack. Let's go to Matthew chapter 17. Verse 14 to 18. I'm not going to really spend time there because I want to really move. I will dwell somewhere. There are areas I need to cover in depth. You will see that the word of God speaks about a child who the Bible says when the spirit comes on him, it throws him in the fire, it throws him in the water, it does this and that. That's what happens when that spirit comes. Can you go to the next verse? Verse 15. Lord have mercy on my son, for he is a lunatic, so vexed. For often he falls into the fire and often into the water. Uh -huh. Next. And I brought him to your disciples and they could not cure him. Nature of attacks, attacks like epilepsy. You may be surprised that the person is attacked once in a while. There may be someone who loves the Lord, but once in a while, that's when the attack happens. That tells you that a demonic attack can, can actually be something that someone suffers. Then you can also experience what is described as obsession. Where the enemy fixes your mind on something wrong, when we talk about a person being obsessed, it means there is a stronghold operating from the mind. It's an attack where the mind gets so focused on something and your mind is driven. An enemy has attacked the mind, taken over your thinking processes or patterns. And you can actually, there are some Christians loving God but suffering from obsessions. This is the spirit behind all forms of addictions. When one gets too obsessed with sex and sexual, perfe sexual perversions and all these other things, that's when now you see that we have a lot of young people. It's a sad reality. I deal with young people a lot of times. Are you hearing me clearly because I'm hearing an echo from my side? Is it, is it my, the egg is terrible. The echo is too much for me here. Unless, unless you are okay and it's me only. Huh? The echo is there. Okay, I hope, they are, I, I hope it's okay. All oh, this time when they were singing, it was fine. It's okay. We, we don't mind. It happens. Now, I was saying, I was saying to you that uh, it's said that we have a lot of young people whose minds have been taken over by perversions. For example, pornography. I have dealt with a lot of young people who are struggling with this thing. Now, I used to think it's only, it only affects boys later on until I discovered that there are also girls who struggle in this area. This, especially these addictions, they thrive in secrecy. When you try to conceal that thing, the danger is these things will continue to grow I have found that there are people who have lost good opportunities in life because of obsessions. Where someone is at work and they still want to access an inter a, a porn site. But now, in most places, there are guys who will be sitting back watching what's up, you know, what happens. They have got a lot of soft softwares to see who go logs into what. And when you are now being called to say, we realize you were visiting these websites during work hours. Yet, 
It's things that you can fight. You can be honest about. By admitting that I need help, you can be helped. I'm serious. Young people, listen to me. These phones can be the worst enemy in your life. When I started seeing many girls also being hooked up into these things, my, my soul got troubled. Because we used to think that it's only men who are affected and attracted by what they see. But we discovered that now that it's a demon. That's why it is no gender selection. And don't think it's only young people. I was talking to a lady recently, and she says to me, she woke up to find the husband helping himself holding a tablet when the wife is there on the bed. What, I'm, what do you want the poor woman to think about yourself? She is there available 100% and you are entertaining yourself from things that are just perfections. I am believing tonight that someone is hearing me. This can be, this can affect your career. This can affect your life. This can steal opportunities. Now, we also have others who still struggle with things like alcohol and smoking, yet they are Christians. The key to your deliverance come out in the open. You can be helped. Then I have also seen that the devil can attack through confusion. Where I have seen some people young people who can spend time studying but uh, even after studying, you will find that uh, they cannot put together what they've spent their time reading, trying to put together. Something just blocks understanding. And then you wonder. Some forget, go blank in the mind. All these kinds of things can actually be attacks of the enemy right in the mental realm. We, we also have some people who go, okay, we have, we have discounted demon possession. The only example of demon possession in the Bible is religion. Where a man's mind, where a man's spirit, soul, and body are taken over 100%. Anywhere else, that does not... As long as a person is a Christian, they cannot be in that state. But Acts chapter 10 verse 38 tells us that how God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth who went about doing good. Healing all who were oppressed of the devil. The devil can also oppress. When we talk of oppression, we have people who feel like they are carrying something heavy. Especially, you hear someone saying, I feel my, my shoulders are heavy. I feel like I'm carrying something. That spirit is a spirit that puts a ceiling in people's progress in life. A spirit of oppression. I have seen situations where if you are not careful in observing, you can actually be... Experiencing a pattern without noticing. There are some people where the devil can put a ceiling that you cannot 
go past this amount of money. You can do anything else. As long as it's, you want to get past that money, something has to happen to bring you back to a certain level of amount of, amount of money. Where you have a ceiling over your life, a spirit of oppression can also oppress a part of your body. The Bible tells us the story of a woman in the book of Luke, chapter 13 from verse number 10, where we hear that there was a woman who was in the temple, double bent over, who could not straighten herself up, oppressed by a spirit. That's a very typical example of how a spirit can work. A lot of people don't realize that the spirit realm has got a lot of influence on the physical realm. As a matter of fact, where we should have begun, if you want to understand the spirit realm properly, is actually Genesis chapter 1 verse 1. Where the Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And when you read there, God, I said it when I started, is a spirit created heavens. That, that version is not actually interpreting correct versions who read heavens. Check the, the latter, all latter versions who read heavens, not heaven. Because from what we also know, even with Pauline Revelation, it's not one heaven. It's actually heavens and the earth. So God, who is a spirit, created heavens, which is a layer in the realm of the spirit, layers in the realm of the spirit. It's an atmosphere. Now, we know that there is a third heaven where Paul says, I was caught up in the third heaven. It goes to say, if there is a third heaven, there must be a second and first. And all activities in the spirit, they all run between these heavens. Now, he says, and the earth. Which means, God, who is a spirit, created heavens, a spiritual realm, and the earth, a physical realm. That tells you that the physical realm came out of the spirit realm. Which means, the physical realm is actually a byproduct of the spiritual realm. If that is the case, that tells you that the spirit realm is actually superior to the physical realm. That tells you that when you want to, when you see anything in the physical, the best place to check is, is this only a physical problem or it is starting in the spirit? Because the spirit realm has a tendency to affect the physical realm. If your problem is starting in the spirit realm, and you go and try to fix it in the physical realm, you are wasting your time. Because anything that is starting in the spirit, and you are fixing it in the physical, you don't go very far. I'll give you an example. We have a number of cases where people have come with the cancer. If someone comes with cancer, for example, let's say it's cancer of the breast. When you see breast cancer and the breast is swollen, wounded, and I remember one day one woman came home and without warning, she just said, Pastor, this is the wound, and opened. My goodness, I nearly ran, ran away. But you see, what you will be seeing there is actually just a physical manifestation. Why is it that they can do chemo, they can apply every form of medication, and they are getting nowhere? It's getting worse every day. Because the real problem is not physical. What you are seeing is a manifestation of a spirit. 
So when this woman was bent over like this, physically, they could have diagonalized and put whatever name they put there. But the real problem was a spirit which is not visible and you cannot detect using any machine. But the spirit could cause a physical manifestation. So, only when you chase out the spirit, that's when now any physical treatment can now start to work. So, which means if they can now do whatever they do, the medication can work now. Why? Because the spiritual influence is no longer there. In fact, I remember the one, the, someone we, we prayed for, the, the, the breast itself started to go back, healing on its own. Why? Because now what was powering the decay is removed. Now, some of you, some of your physical problems that you are seeing, that have been diagonized using so many names and wonder. Some of the names are even scary and big. It's not really much about that. If, okay, for some of you, if you have gone to doctors and they have failed to diagonize a problem, any problem that you see, they cannot specifically tell you what this problem is. Diagnosis is not working. You must know that that thing is rooted in the spirit because their machines cannot see spirits. When uh, we, sometime last year, but one, we went, into, we went to the UK for short-term missionary work. And uh, when we were there, our secretary now, current secretary in the office, be began to communicate with us and said, my sister has a challenge. She had um, been, she, she got bedridden because the back, her back, they had, um, she, she just could not use the back anymore. And I remember when we got back, we said, okay, can you bring her home? If I had known that she was in such a bad condition, I wouldn't have said bring her. Because with the breast, what, what, what this thing that they tie, plus clutches, still she was struggling, barely able to move. Got into the house, propped on many, chair, on, on many, on, on, on many cushions to try to comfort her. As we were praying, we discovered that there was a spiritual a spirit that was influencing. And by that time, she was bent over like this, moving. You know, she could move like this. Bent. This is a 22-year-old. And the doctors had said, the only solution is we will cut here, put a, what, a metal thing here, and they said, then she mustn't have she mustn't get pregnant in her life because it will affect this line in whatever. Imagine telling a 22-year-old who is not even married such bad news. Thank God that was June. They had booked there for October for operation. We prayed with her. Instantly, we saw her being able to stand on her own, being able to now start to walk around the house, but still bend over, not straightened up. She was able to go home, start to move around, go to the toilet on her own when, when she was being bathed all this time. But when then, after about two weeks, you know, you, you cannot live like this if you're a person. They said, ah, she's having some pains again. I said, okay, bring her home. I also want to tell someone that deliverance can be a process. Because there are some times when, if you are not careful, you can lose out because you think it's a braggart, a braggart. No, it's not. It's a, it's, it's a real work. She came back. Then, after I prayed for her, the pains lifted. But, for some reason, and I didn't know why, she was still like this. 
Then I said to her, I gave her some message to listen to on healing. I said, keep listening to these messages. Whether you are cooking, whether you are doing whatever, just be listening to these messages on healing. Why do we do that? Because the word of God is the medicine. And when you are listening to the word of God, some of you, I, I always give people this principle to say, keep listening. Even when you, when you think you are not consciously listening. Some of you, you know when you have gone to, you know, some of you have gone with, into public transport and they are playing their music. You are not even paying attention. You don't even want to. Then you get home and you start singing along what, what was being sung. How, how did it enter you? Now, so we are saying, use the same principle to say, you know, anytime you have a challenge, you need to target the word of God towards that problem. So when you are sick, find the word of God that addresses sickness. Keep listening to that word. Keep listening to that word. If, so because this, that word as it comes into you, healing is taking place. I remember a testimony. She says, one day, about a week or so after the prayer, she said, all of a sudden, she just had at the back an adjustment. Car. On her own, no one is praying for her. And she was straight up. I remember her coming to church to give a testimony, going up the stairs. In fact, she spent quite some months looking after her sister's baby. Healed, straight. Right now she's going back to Zimbabwe. She's in business. Why? Because what we discussed, what we discovered, the doctors then said, when she went on the date, she said, can I go back? I said, go back and let them confirm something. Five doctors were waiting to do an operation. And they see a girl coming, walking like this. They said, what? They said, are you the girl? They said, yeah, it's me. They said, okay, let's do. They discovered that two discs which were missing had now been recreated. They were now back in place. You know. What am I telling somebody here? When the spirit powering your problem gets out of the way, that's the beginning of your healing. That's the beginning of your... Everything in your life can now begin to work. Hallelujah. Uh, let me just talk from my heart. Because otherwise... It's so much I cannot be able to address a lot of things. Let me talk from my heart as the Spirit leads me. You know, some time ago, I, I, I give these examples to illustrate some points. Some time ago, the Lord led me to declare 21 days of prayer and fasting at church. We were focusing on families. As the prayers began, God gave me a scripture, which I want us to read. 2 Samuel, chapter 21. 2 Samuel, chapter 21. We'll read from verse number 1. During the reign of David, there was a famine for three successive years. So David sought the Lord, the face of the Lord. The Lord said... It is on account of Saul and his blood-stained house. It is because he put the Gibeonites to death. Come to think about it. I want to believe that year number one, drought. And David said, ah, no, this is normal. It's geography. Year number two came drought. David said, ah. Year number three, drought. Then David said, no, this is not normal. I cannot have years of successive drought like this and continue as if everything is okay. The Bible then says, 
And David inquired of the Lord. Only then, when he inquired of the Lord, that's according to the New, New King James Version, inquired of the Lord. This one says he sought the face of the Lord. Why was he seeking the face of the Lord? To find out what was the reason for this affliction. I want to tell you that during that season, the Lord just said to me, tell the people to pray prayers of inquiry. Because some people, when you pray a prayer of inquiry, it's a prayer where you are asking God the reason for, there are things you can be seeing in your life. And you can tell this is not normal. But you don't have an explanation as to why. You have a right to go to God and say, God, show me why is this affliction not going? That prayer of inquiry can only be prayed by a person who has faith. A person who believes that God can answer and respond to my inquiry. And I want to say to you, when we prayed that prayer, a lot of people were amazed. When they, I remember someone tell, telling me that God took them back into their family in a hut where things were done, covenants were made years ago. They were watching the whole process happening in a dream. Why? Because somebody has asked, why if I, am I going through what I am going through? There are certain patterns in life that should not be accepted as normal. No. It's not correct. One big question I'm normally asked during deliverance is, Pastor, some, some say, Pastor, I fast, I pray, I give, but why am I still seeing certain things that are not changing? Then there are also others who say, Pastor, I love God, but some even ask out of observation, why are Christians who love God, and I was teaching like yesterday, who have got eternal life, why do we see them oppressed and afflicted? I will give you a few reasons. I discovered there are over 20, but I will just give you to show you that there can be a basis why and some other things happen. Number one can be that at the point of your repentance, no deliverance was done. Right. I want you to imagine, think about a typical normal, normal service that we do. We normally say, anyone here who wants to receive Jesus Christ, come as your Lord and Savior. And people lift their hands. A person comes here, they stand, we make them repeat the prayer. Many a times, nobody prays a prayer of deliverance there. Sometimes we just say, turn around, there's, an, there's some behind you who wants to love you. And it's this usher who is not even trained, who takes the person into a room we don't know what they're going to say, and they just go there, they take the person's details, and we don't even use the details after or afterwards. So nobody even gets to see to find out who is this person who has come into this church? Who is this individual? Where are they coming from? In the Bible, the Bible tells us that there is a place where when they had repented, they brought all their books of sorcery from where they were practicing sorcery. Why do we have nobody today, nobody brings anything after repentance? Is it that people don't have things? We have people who come into some they also don't know that they need to be delivered. So it means that person, if they are clever, they come in, we start teaching them to tithe. After a year, after about a year, we say you are a deacon. They are clever, they are also a deacon. And life, life goes. They are now a leader, but oppressed. 
You know, 2015, I went to a place and uh, we were there staying in a certain place. These were deacons. Normally, when I am in a place, I do what I call em financial empowerment seminars. And so I did it after about a month where I preached from Friday to Sunday only on finances, kingdom, the, the kingdom way. But on Saturday night, I do financial deliverance. Now, I remember it was Saturday night when I said, can we lift our hands? Now I want to pray a mass prayer. The first demon that came out very violent, he needed about four men, came from the deacon we were staying with. I had also prayed for her at the normal Sundays, no demon had come out. But on this particular Sunday, on this particular night, a demon came out. Now, I'm saying this for a reason. When we went home after, after a deliverance, she went to sit. I went straight to sleep. She was sitting on a couch. And my, and my mom found this comes. She says, mm, the way she's sitting in the I think she's disturbed. Can you go and talk to her? The moment I got in there, she said, I've been prayed for by bishops, apostles, overseers. I've never manifested a demon. Why tonight? As I am sitting there, I thank God for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit just dropped a scripture in my heart. And I will show you tonight. Matthew chapter 3 verse 10. Where the Bible says. The ex. Is already at the root of the trees. And every tree that does not produce good fruit. Will be cut down and thrown into the fire. And that's what God told me. And he said. Tell her. All this time. The ex had not gone to the root. But tonight, the ex went to the root. I can tell you, not every service can address the root issue. There are some of you here tonight who may be one who, 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 who may see certain things happening to yourself. If I were you, I, would, I must be willing to be set free. Than to keep my demon. Out of pride. You know pride can kill. My sister's young sister died. Literal death. She got diagnosed of kidneys. Young girl. Came home. I said, my name, can I pray for you? I said, when you were in the hospital, what was happening? She said to me, I was seeing someone uh, coming to sit on me in, in the hospital. I said, my nini, there are no kidneys. It's a demon. Can I pray for you? Prayed for her. Started manifesting. But the, her friend was also there. In the morning, out of pride, she said, I'm going, uh, no, I'm going to Zimbabwe. Please, I'm going to Zimbabwe. And she left. Went to Zim. Got there. Ah. Before long, she's on dialysis. Before long, after some time, she passed on. When she passed on, a pastor in the church where she was going, yo, oh, okay, she discounted us. The pastor says to. Said, uh, there's a time when she phoned me and she was in the hospital and she told me that she was being choked. One day she came to church, she just fell in the church and I said as I will be preaching, she's going to be alright. Now that's, 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 that's how to deal with certain churches, their doctrines can cause you to die while you are still there. 
It's not for what in faith for, the, for that matter anyway. But she literally died. Pride can make you die physically. Now I need to educate you on something. I will finish the story of that lady whom we prayed for where I was talking about the, the ex because there is a, there's a second part to it. Now, and it's, it's, it's about I will show you that the spirit realm is a very serious. Some of the things that we are looking at and struggling with even financially for a lot of people a lot of those things are sitting in the spirit realm. I know this. I deal with the people every time. Here is something that we have seen. A lot of people struggle today, especially us, because of where we come from. And you are going to, you are hearing it from me. My father, my, my grandfather, Mabwe, was a serious man in traditional things. Ancestral, no. My grandfather on the mother's side, my grandfather on, my, on the mother's side was a certified Sangoma. With a certificate, if you know in Zimbabwe, Zinata, he had a certificate. Zimbabwe National Traditional Healers Association on the wall. So I grew up in a setup where if you say the headache, my mother knew where to cut and put black stuff. I grew up knowing that any time when they would call us for this, no, but they would call a night of dancing and appeasing the ancestors. There were times when we would eat porridge. You have never eaten porridge with your fist. Some of us have. Where a rusero, what do you call it? A ridi, whatever thing. Is full of porridge. And you, you, you put your fist there. You pass to the next one. We, 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 in the morning, we will go to the river. And we have been cleansed using a tail of an oxen. Reach your cleansy. We were young, but I saw those things. Now, I want you to put Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse 9. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verse number 9. When you enter the land your God is giving you, do not imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let's go. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices their son or daughter in the fire. Who practices divination or sorcery. Interprets omens, engages in witchcraft. Next. Or cast spells. Or who is a medium or a spiritist. Or who consults the dead. That's where the African dies. Consulting the dead. And you want to think they are not here. Who, do, who, who are still doing this? They are here. He knows the last time we were, when we went to Polokwane. So sad. And I speak this with a heavy heart. A child of God in this church speaking in tongues still being dragged into these things. A husband of some wife. Still compromising. Some even say, no, me, I just drive them, I just give them my car to go, to go away. Me, I don't enter. So when they enter, do you think they will not mention your name in there? So as I was praying for people, a woman comes, an elder, and he says, I, am, I want to let you know, I am standing on behalf of my family. My husband is there. He is refusing to come. He is sitting in the bench. He has refused to come out. But he still practices these things that we are talking about. Ha! Most 
most of us, a lot of our problems are rooted in these things. We are either the first generation to come out of witchcraft or we are the second generation. Blessed are you if your parents were no longer into these things. But for most of us, we are actually the ones who are running out. And if you don't take these things seriously, you will remain ensnared in your life. Don't listen to them and when they try to pull the, the fear plug on you. No. Stand your ground. You know, when I came into Christ, I stood my ground against my father. My father said, I will disown you. You are no longer going to be my son. You have disgraced, disgraced me because I was the firstborn. And I said, Daddy, I am not going to follow your things. I will not do your things. But there is a, the reason why these things are important for you to understand is because there's something I need to explain. If I explain this, I hope with grace and with understanding, some of you will be able to understand where some of your challenges are coming from. You know when you, when you pray for a lot of people, you will actually discover that there are some spirits that really find that are stubborn, that show that they have been authorized to be operating on a person's life. And you, oh, for some time, I was studying to check where are these things come from. For, for some time, there is a group of people I could not help because I assumed that it's all about just casting out a demon. Till I discovered that there is another category of demons that need a special way to pray. And we are going to engage that prayer tonight. Let me explain now. When you deal with just a simple devil, a simple demon, you find that all you need to do is cast it out. When you cast it out, that spirit goes. The only condition is make sure your heart gets filled with the word and the spirit. Because the Bible says when the spirit goes into a, into a wilderness, it does not feel comfortable. It wants to come and check. That spirit, if you keep your house clean and well done, there is no problem. You can keep that devil out. There is a second category of demons that come with another angle. Now, that angle, if you want to use a loose, uh, that's actually the most appropriate language. They are powered by what is called an altar. Those kinds of demons are terrible. I will tell you how this works by explanation. When you see those kinds of demons, you are not only dealing with a demon, you are dealing with a demon, you are dealing with an altar, you are dealing with a person. You are dealing with also where the person took that, or that, got that spirit empowerment. For example, when someone wants money and he decides to go to a sangoma or whatever where he goes, as he goes, imagine I am entering a shrine. The moment someone walks into a shrine, that moment you are submitting to the spirit that works with the person you are encountering now. When you enter in there and you meet a person in front of you, where you say, uh, uh, Now, when you say, my things are not working, I've come to seek for help. In most of the cases, the person you are talking to is not the deal. The person you are talking to is only a priest to an altar. That's why after you have said, I have come for help, 
the person does not address you only. He turns around to consult on this altar. That tells you that the real deal is not the person you are talking to. The real deal is the spirit that where this person is getting instructions from. I told you I'm talking about spiritual intelligence. So, by the time this person is talking to this altar, he is only a priest. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? And the spirit that he is talking to is the real deal. When you check many sangomas, no matter how rich they are, they, you will never see them doing their things in a nice house. Even if he has a nice house, it will be there. He will take you into a shrine very dirty and he himself has a way of dressing, a way of eating, a way of living. Why is he doing that? To please the spirit that he works with. Because the spirit has demands. You become an effective priest to the degree of your alignment with the spirit that you serve. You hear what I'm telling you? So, this person is given rules on how to live. Rules on how to eat. Now, when he consults the spirit on your behalf, he is now given instructions on how to solve your problem. Now, if he says, as he comes to you, maybe he takes something, he puts it on his altar there, and then he takes it out. Come, I want to, come, I want to illustrate with you. Then, he says, take this thing. Usually, the thing is not even very complicated in the eyes. What is important is not how it looks. What is important is the power that has been lodged onto this thing. The spirit lodged here. Because he is saying to you, when you take this thing with the spirit lodged in it, this thing is going to help you to get the money you want. It's going to help you to get the favor you want. It's going to help you to, uh, to, to attack your enemies. It's going to help you to what? So he says, now take this thing and go. Normally, you are not going to go just like that. He gives you instructions. When you get home, Find a room where nobody else can enter. Only you should enter there. Right? Only you should enter there. And as you enter that room, this is what you do weekly or monthly or after whatever time he tells you. That means what he is telling you, I have lodged the spirit from my altar. So, you are carrying that spirit home. Go. And as you go into that house, it means you have turned your house into a mean shrine. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Your house is now a mean shrine. That's why he gives you rules to observe. Because you must also live in accordance and in blessing to the spirit. That's how the spirit works for you. Now, if one of the things he tells you, he says, this spirit is a man. You will need a wife. Now, that's where all problems start of these spiritual husbands. Because then, that's when they are told, he can be told, just mention a name of a girl close to you, a relative. You don't have to agree, you are not there. The name is just mentioned. As soon as the name is mentioned, Susan, on that altar. Then, as you get, oh, sorry, there's a Susan here. Now, as you get home, and you are living your life. One day you find there is a figure coming to sleep with you. From where? You don't know. Other places where spiritual husbands come from. 
is where they tell you there is an avenging spirit. Ngozi. And they go there. Same process. They are told you must identify a girl. As a way to appease the spirit. You don't have to be there. You don't have to agree. Your name is mentioned. That's it. The problem when you are dealing with an altar is this one. In a deliverance service like this one, we say out. That's when you hear a demon say, eh, uh, we have been out. Wait, our things were working here. Our, no. And then it goes, right? Do you know that if that demon was bringing money every day, it means tomorrow there will be a report card that says I was disturbed. Because something will report to the one who is benefiting from this person's life. And when that report reports there, the person has an option to now either redirect somewhere or to reinforce back. When he chooses to send back, it means he is saying, we, I am prepared to fight for what I was possessing. But dealing with the spirit, an intelligent human being who is now also an, or a priest somewhere. This is where most people cannot be de delivered easily because you are dealing with an intelligent spirit and an intelligent priest somewhere. Now I will tell you, what do we do when that happens? If you just address the demon, you are not going to win. You also must deal with the old. Most of the time, when I do deliverance, I pray a simple prayer first. Like we did with one young with one with one, one lady who came from Zimbabwe. Suffering. Miscarriage after miscarriage. Marriage is in trouble. Bleeding continuously. She has lost money which she could have used. A, a person with three degrees. A chartered accountant. On top of that. Master's degrees. But grounded by demons. She came. First time we prayed. And I said, you can go. She went. After a week, it was like the fight had now doubled. It was now worse off than before we prayed. Then I said, come back. She came back. And I already knew what we are dealing with now. I knew there's something. Then I said, this time, we'll address the real thing. The world as well. After addressing it, a week passes. She's back in Zim. In a dream, she sees, because all the time when we were praying, the demon would mention an uncle. Now, as we were praying, she's back. She dreams of the same uncle fighting a brother, her own brother. It's in the dream. She says in the dream, let me help my brother to deal with this uncle. He has been affecting us for a long time. They fought him, defeated him in the dream. The next day, in the afternoon, the angle collapses and dies. I will leave you to add one plus one. That was Kisa. Oh, we need to, you need to know, spirit, you, need, you, need, you need to know how to deal with these things. One of my daughters in the, in, in the Lord, we did the longest deliverance we ever did. 9, 9 p.m. to 5 a.m. Trying to deliver a person. It was only around 5 when we were able to, set a, to, to get a free. In the process of delivering her, the demon laughed. Like, he, 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 he said, you can never do anything to me. I said, why? He said, yeah, because her blood, we took it. We have that blood in a calabash. And it is in a desert. So you tell me, you, you know how to pray. How do you pray? 
for such. I will leave you to think. I will, I will be telling you how I prayed to deal with that one. Now she's free. I will tell you. I told you I will leave the story of the other lady we prayed for. Remember? So after we prayed for her, she didn't tell us what happened next. <laughs> then he, Last year, when we, when we visited the region, they were hosting us. And then she says, you know, over here, let me tell you the full story of what happened that night. So, they had an uncle who had been fighting them as a family. Very terrible, very terrible. And they didn't know the extent. So, that night when we prayed for her in Johannesburg, there in Chipinge, you know that altar, Harit the Gumusha, you know, that, that's Magate, you know, you know the, the front where there are these pots and uh, clay pots. All of them that were in the front that very night, they broke into pieces. That night. And when they broke into pieces, the men ran to the mother of this lady, the, 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 our, our, our deacon, and now said, Please, my name is Garisan Eshwakanaka. Let's stay together in peace, my name. Let's stay together in peace. Why is he now asking for peace terms? Did she even have a clue what he was doing? No. But he himself knew. He saw the results and he knew that something has been hap has happened where he was hanging his things. I'll tell you. That uh, we have some bruises. We have 40 battles. There are some people that normally they struggle to be set free. Until I got to know these things, I couldn't get some people set free. Because you have to know how to pray over such. And let me give you the technology. Do you want to, do you want to know the technology? First Kings chapter 13 verse 1. First Kings chapter 13, verse 1. The devil tonight is in trouble. Because this one is dangerous to easy to ignorance. Now, before I read this passage, I need to let you know what was happening. When David left Solomon on the throne, Solomon sinned against God. And when Solomon sinned against God, God said, I'm going to divide the nation after your death. So, ten tribes went to the north and they became known as Israel. Two tribes remained in the south and they became known as Judah. That was Judah and Benjamin that remained. Those that went to the north, they went with this man called Jeroboam. And Jeroboam was fearing. That the Israelites will go back and worship the same God if they go back to worship at the temple of Solomon. So he says, what can I do? He decides to erect an altar in his land on the mountain. When he erected that altar there, the Bible tells us that God sent a prophet. By the word of the Lord, a man came from Judah where things were still okay to Bethel. As Jeroboam was standing by the altar to make an offering. So even a king was now a priest. Awkward. He's standing there. I want you to picture it. The man of God is arriving at that mountain. The king is making an offering. Let's see what happens. Next. By the word of the Lord, he cried out against what? The altar. He cried out against what? Did he cry against the king? No. He cried out against the altar. And he said what? Altar, altar. This is what the word of the Lord says. A son named Josiah will be born to the house of David. On you, he will sacrifice the priest of the Most High. Who make offerings here and human bones will be bent on you. He is speaking to the altar. Next. That same day, the man of God gave a sign. 
This is the sign. The Lord declared. The altar will be split apart. And ashes on it will be poured out. Next. When King Jeroboam heard what the men of God cried against the altar at Bethel. He stretched out his hand from the altar and said, seize him. But the hand he stretched out towards the men shriveled up. And he could not pull it back. Next. Also the altar was split apart. And its ashes poured out according to the sign given by the man of God by the word of the Lord. Hear me, people of, uh, in Cape Town, I have come to cause a riot in the spirit. I have not come in peace. I have come to cause a riot in the spirit. You have put on your t-shirts on the wrong day. I should have been putting on my regalia like yesterday. That uh, we are ready to shoot it against the devil. Because the technology is when you now know and have an intelligence that you are dealing with an altar. You don't have to address only the devil. You address the altar as well. You learn from there. Altar! Altar! Hear the word of the Lord. And when you target that altar, the, the scripture tells us altars can hear, physical objects can hear, physical objects can respond to spiritual things. Are you hearing me tonight? Don't tell me the altar is in the desert. I have come here to tell you that the word of God, just like that, he didn't have to touch it. All he did was to speak. I want you to let I want to let you know I am bringing in your hands tonight what I call intercontinental ballistic missiles. Don't tell me that the altar is in Chipinge. Tonight we have the word of God in the house. I can release the word of God and in Chipinge there can be chaos. Don't tell me the altar is in KZN. I can release the word of God from here. Oya Kataba Hasita. Listen to me. We are now doing what is called the battle of altars. Where whenever you are confronted with an altar, make sure yours is stronger than the opposition. Why? Elijah says, <laughs> you prophets of Baal, build the altar. Anytime you build an altar, you have a God in mind. He says, build your altar. The God who answers by fire, let him be God. I am here to let you know that tonight we are erecting, in fact, we already have a superior altar in heaven because Jesus is the is sitting on an altar <laughs> called the mercy seat. Are you hearing me? And from that altar, no demon can challenge us. No devil can challenge us. Don't worry about people. He did not speak to the king. The Bible says we don't fight against the flesh and the blood. But against the principalities, powers, and dominions. Don't waste your time. Hey, grandmother is bewitching us. Don't worry about the grandmother. Address the altar. Address the altar. Are you hearing me? Because even if you kill her, she may have trained another priest already. Even if you kill her, the altar is still in the family. As long as the altar is in the family, suffer continue. But tonight, the axe is being laid to the roots. The axe is going to the roots. Elder Lebo, come. Present worship, come. Because now we are about to enter another arena. Indo Daias Bonel. This time is meant for himself, God for us all. Hear me. 
Vanessa and Gatsina Gatsika Kama Kore tonight can be your answer. Tonight can be the answer. Where what was not sorted for years can be sorted tonight. Katika lida ba katila tahasa do shantaya. The devil is a liar. Thank you, Jesus. We cannot be serving a mighty God and be under siege. Tonight I'm ready for battle. Even if I sleep at one o'clock, I don't care. But we must make sure every devil is under our feet tonight. Thank you, Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. There is power, power in the name of Jesus. There is power. The name of Jesus, there is power to break every chain. To break every chain. I sense that tonight. Something is, has to break loose in this place. Something has to break loose in this place. Yeah. I was not telling you these stories to excite you, but just to give you context to let you know that there is an answer. He came to set the captives free. How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with the power, you, he went about doing good, setting free all who were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. To declare that the captives are set free. Tonight in this place, as we are worshiping God, I want you to begin to look at your life and demand total release. And demand total release. I'm, going, I'm, I'm about to pray, but I want the atmosphere to be quite conducive for what we're about to do. Let's lift up Jesus. Let him be lifted in this place. Pagama is Lord.
The time has come when God is about to set captives free. The time has come. He is in this place. The time has come. The time has come. The time has come. Jesus is the time has come. The time has come. The time has come. The time has come. Yes. Jesus. We are entering. We are entering now. A battle arena. We are entering now. A time of warfare. We are entering now. A time of warfare. Jesus. Jesus. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Bring them. Jesus. Bring them. Lord. Shakar, Give me volume here. I need more volume. Oh, Yaba Shakata Yamando. The time has come. The time has come. He is in the house. 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 Pastors come. Pastors come. 
He's in the house. He's in the house. Pastors come. Jesus. 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 Shaba katara kotoro kosa mate. Shaba kataya hase. Share re 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 bosa kataya. Listen to me. We are about to pray. The most dangerous prayer. Tonight, the prayer that will turn your life around, the prayer that will report wherever things have been done. Lift up your hands, lift up your hands. He's in the house. Listen to me. Just to cool a little bit. We want to address the legalities first. I want you to pray loud and after me. And say in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Tonight. Tonight. I decree. I decree. That I am set free. That I am set free. Every work of witchcraft, every work of witchcraft, which has been done against my life, which has been done against my life, done against my family, done against my family. Tonight, tonight, it is revoked. It is revoked. It is reversed. It is reversed. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Wherever, wherever, an altar has been erected. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I call upon the name of Jesus. I call upon the name of Jesus. And make a declaration. And make a declaration. That altar. 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 Hear the word of the Lord. Hear the word of the Lord. Tonight. Tonight. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You are breaking apart. You are breaking apart. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I set myself free. From every power of witchcraft, from every demonic bondage, covenants are broken tonight. Covenants in the blood are broken tonight. In the blood of Jesus, I appeal to the better blood, the blood of Jesus, and declare. Covenants are broken. In the name of Jesus, I receive my deliverance. Lift your hands now. Because now, 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 yokes are breaking. I command every demon to go. I command every altar to break. I command every altar to break. Break, 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 break. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Bring it here. 
Kahuna mandia takaya Koriba takaya rikata Shaka takaya rikata Kantere boko shiata Rekete kerebe kete Out Lose it Out 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 of it Continue to pray Continue to pray for you Aha Bring it Bring it here Kontala baka sataya Shaka takaya mandorobo koto Shahuna mande katia la baka satiara Rekete kerebo shikata Shaka takaya mandorobo koto Shekete kerebe kete Lose Lose Let her go Break Break Shaka rekete rebo sata Lava saka tarabo koto robo shaka rehani King of signs, we worship you. You reign forever, Almighty God. of sun.